Meanwhile, sources at the NDLEA say the video purportedly showing how arrested DCP Abba Kiari was negotiating a drug deal is a small piece of evidence the agency has against him. Spokesman for the agency, Fem Baba Femi, says before declaring the police officer wanted, the agency had dotted, uh, rather dotted its I's and crossed its T's. Sifanesian reports. The arrest of DCP Abakiari and four others who are now in the custody of the NDLEA has been the talking town ever since he was declared wanted by the agency. They are being held for their alleged involvement in a 25-kilogram cocaine deal. This video, the outcome of a sting operation which is now making the rounds, is just a small fragment of the evidence the agency has in its kitty, according to sources at the Drug Law Enforcement Agency. While the police statement that indicated the unethical involvement of DCP Carey in the drug case, the Inspector General of Police had also asked the chairman of the NDLEA to look inward and read the agency of corrupt officials. We gathered that a number of erring officials of the Drug Law Enforcement Agency had been shown the way out long before the sting operation. It's unclear the volume of evidence the agency has against the police operatives and the extent it is willing to go in prosecuting the case. But sources suggest a Pandora box of evidence has just been opened. On Monday, Nigerians were shocked to hear that suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abba Kiari, had been busted for alleged illicit drug trafficking. Kiari had earlier been indicted for his alleged involvement with advanced free fraudster Ramon Abbas, also known as Hush Puppy, and was facing possible extradition to the United States to stand trial. The suspended police officer, alongside other policemen, was declared wanted by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, for failing to honor its invitation, but was later arrested by the police and handed over to the NDLEA. The disgraced so-called supercop was caught in a sting operation over his involvement with an international drug cartel that operates the Brazil-Ethiopia-Nigeria illicit drug pipeline. The NDLEA said Harry had questions to answer in the ongoing drug case. Now joining us to discuss the latest saga involving Kiari and what this shows about the level of sleaze in Nigeria's law enforcement agencies is Dele Faratimi, a lawyer, fiery critic and civil rights activist. Mr. Faratimi will also be giving us his views on the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, which President Muhammadu Buhari has pointedly ignored since it was retransmitted to him by the National Assembly, as well as the state of play ahead of the 2023 general election. Welcome to the show, Mr. Faratimi, and good morning. <clears throat> good morning. Good morning, Dele. Thank you for joining us. Morning. Well, you had uh, two notes. Good morning, uh, Doc. Yes. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You had uh, Tundun's uh, detailed introduction. Well, from uh, Super Cop to Cop Puppy, uh, <laughs> what's your take on the travails of uh, DCP Abakiari, who we have now been told has another issue, a uh, drug related issue, uh, in, another, in addition uh, to the outstanding issue about the magistrate court in the US that had declared him uh, wanted? For money laundering, wire fraud uh, matters. Uh, who is on trial? Nigeria itself? The police? Abia Kiari? Your take. Well, um, good morning again, Doc. The Nigerian police and the Nigerian authorities are rulers. Maybe even some of us will prefer to focus on Kiari and make this exclusively about Kiari. But um, we would only, as usual, be lying to ourselves as to exactly what we are dealing with. Kiari is not just the rogue cop. We're talking about a rogue system. When the law enforcement agent who is meant to enforce laws have no laws to enforce, he inevitably begins to enforce impunity, which is the only thing available for enforcement. Because he necessarily has to be selective as to who he pursues and who he leaves alone. So when you have that kind of system in place, and then somebody like Kiari leverages on the impunity that already governs the system, 
what you then get is that we selectively raise noises about Kiari as though he were to be some outlier. Yeah, it was okay. We were caught, we were the press and everybody were busy shouting that he was a super cop. But these stories were always there, but they were blithely ignored. He was about the only police officer I knew of who would be going on a special operation and the press would accompany him. He would be in the bush looking for kidnappers and they would be taking pictures. I seem to recall one of your shows where Dr. Ruben actually raised this point on the morning show. So we can conveniently ignore the fact that he's only a type and then begin to talk about him as though he were to be an isolated incident and that nobody else is doing the same. No, there are several. He's not alone. He's a systemic problem. So it's Nigeria itself that should be looking in the mirror. This is not just about Abba Kiari. A system enabled him. He was supposedly suspended and yet he was still leading operations. These are issues that we should honestly look at ourselves and tell ourselves the honest truth. Kiari is not an exception. He is the rule and that is how our system runs. So if we are talking Kiari, it is convenient for his courts that we focused on him, but it goes beyond that. And we all know it too. Yes, Dele, that's the danger of that pointing finger. It just discourages self-accountability. Very few will argue with the point that you just made. And that same point that you just made about the systemic rot has led some to believe that this entire NDLEA press conference, the arrest by the police, handing over of Abakiari to the NDLEA is some huge, you know, pantomime orchestrated to somehow prevent um, Kiari's extradition. A lot of people believe that because there's just such a lack of trust. However, I'd like us to go through it. I mean, is that the logical approach? Why not then just exploit Article 4 of our extradition treaty between Nigeria and the United States of America, which carries more weight in America than any enactment of the Nigerian National Assembly? According to Article 4, if he was being tried for that offense of assisting Hush Puppy to imprison and torture Vincent Chibuzo here in Nigeria, then there would be no need for extradition. The Nigerian government did not, has not, I should say, charged him for that. Why go this long-winded route that will only defer and not discharge any request for extradition? Well, um, when you live in an environment where the facts are stranger than fiction, when you live in an environment where the government spins all manner of stories to cover the truth routinely, and don't worry, I'm not traveling too far. Just October 2020. We still can't tell the truth of what happened that day because the government is the greatest concealer of the truth. So you have a situation where routinely the Nigerian is always played. We expect the worst of those who rule us. So it's, yes, it might sound like it's a conspiracy theory. And anyone who says that would also be completely right to throw that around. But those of us, and I happen to be one of those who have looked at the wordings of Section 3, Subsection 3 of the Extradition Act, and it's very clear. If, we're, if, you, look, if you follow the precedents in Abia, versus, uh, Abia and the Attorney General of the Federation, the recently delivered ruling of the Supreme Court, which Dr. Abati essentially diagnosed, he, he analyzed a few days ago, and I watched as well, the court is always going to strictly construe any piece of legislation. And if you look at the clear wordings of Section 3, Subsection 3, you will see very clearly that as long as the man in question is standing trial or has been sentenced for something else different from that for which he is being sought, he cannot be extradited. I don't, I'm not familiar with the Article 4 that you just spoke about. I can't speak to it. I might very well be wrong, it's very possible. But in an environment where the government is the chief promoter of conspiracy theories, and we also know that the only time anybody is caught and prosecuted for anything in Nigeria is when he has run afoul of our local laws. So it's not, it's not 
improbable when people look at these facts. It might very well be a conspiracy and we hope that it is because it at least cleans the rest of us of this guilt if the person who has been scapegoated in this situation, Abba Kiari, is indeed taken to go and face the, the, the court as, he has, as has been requested. But in all honesty, it is not something to be lightly dismissed. We were all here, I recall, when I was telling you the other time that nothing will happen to Magu. What has happened to him? It's only in Nigeria you hear that kind of noise, you hear people being put through all kinds of trials that are unknown to law within Aso Rock, and the next thing, nothing happens to the man, he was merely removed and somebody has replaced the person. Look at the, the Adiza Usman, Bala Usman issue as well. So you have a situation where we are used to being played. So we are not being unnecessarily paranoid when we find it difficult to accept that the NDLEA that has not in any part of its history ever arranged somebody based on all this kind of sting operation before suddenly woke up and started acting movies. We hope that justice will be done. But don't blame us for being skeptical. It's because in Nigeria, history has taught us to expect the worst. And they've always surpassed the worst. So please, it's not our fault. No, it's, it's the reality it's really of our not. lives. It's really not. And you're not wrong. I just want to clarify. You're citing Article 3 of a Nigerian law. Nigeria's um, Extradition Act saying that if somebody has yeah. been charged for a crime, a crime, any crime, that until the end of that process, they cannot be extradited. So what I was saying is that that is a deferral at best not a discharge. And I was referring to Article 4 of our treaty with America, which Uncle Sam will respect more, that if he has been charged with that same crime in Nigeria, then they can never extradite him again, because that yes. will then fall foul of the rule against double jeopardy. But your point that you've made is very clear. I just wanted to, you know, clarify on that point. But in any case, um, extradition is not automatic. Uh, will you consider uh, Abba Kiari a fugitive uh, at this point, despite the uh, U.S. Magistrate Court declaring him wanted. Because under Section 9 of the Extradition Act, 1966, the U.S. has to make a formal request. That formal request has not been made. And that is why some people are saying maybe this is an attempt to cover up, because one big defense that Abba Kiari can bring up in court is that he was not guilty of any money in laundering, that he received the money for tailoring purposes, he helped uh, Oshpopi to make uh, uh, very fine clothes. Uh, would that defense, uh, you know, protect him? And do you think that there is an attempt at, uh, you know, delay tactics or cover up on the part of the Nigerian authorities? We're even told that the panel has said the best punishment for him is for him to be demoted and for him to continue with his, uh, with his uh, job as police. Man. See, um, when we live in a place where the law does not rule, such as our country, and you know very clearly that the law does not rule when you have different standards for the treatment of the same issue, depending on who is involved. Mr. Kiari's colleagues in the police have, have been told were merely going to give him a slap on the wrist and he was going to be demoted to the next rank. That was, I am told, due to have been announced on the same day as the day that the NDLEA brought its sting operation out. We are dealing with a situation where the least trustworthy person in the Nigerian space is the Nigerian state and its agents. Routinely, we take anything they say with a pinch of salt or perhaps even a bag full of salt. So all kind of conspiracies begin to be seeded in this environment. And all these things are not far from the truth. When you look to the fact that Malami was speaking with a journalist only a week or so ago, and in the course of that discussion, he conceded that Kiari had, um, had had a case made against him justifying any extradition, and if one was made, he will be entertained. And then, the very next week, 
I have this situation where the NDLA comes out with this fantastic sting operation that he had never managed to carry out in his long history. At least I haven't heard of a single one since his creation, and I'm old enough to remember his creation, I believe in the days of Kwaja Fafulani. He had never done anything of this nature. The same NDLA, I believe it was, uh, was it Leo Akabwe, some, some drug guy imported a whole lot of drugs into Nigeria. On NTA, they were born in it, and then some journalists poked and found that they were born in empty cartons. And then in the same NDLA, is now coming now to say that this super cop that all of them have been venerating, all of a sudden he's been caught dealing drugs. Let's begin to look at something together. This man's operational turf is not narcotics. It's usually armed robbery, murder, kidnapping, if he's coordinating so effectively and so nicely with NDLA officers to the point where he knows kingpins and is intercepted, you know, you know that this is not just a one-man operation, it's a systemic thing. And the system itself is the one that is giving him up. So I'm happy that a man is being given up, but I'm more interested in seeing to the sanitization of the system. So I'm not going to start clapping for NDLA or clapping. For, no, 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 no. There is more to this. It's a good thing. You know, the beautiful thing about having people defending lives is that eventually they get caught out. Because the more questions you ask, the more lies they are. Well, NDLEA, I'm sure you oh, recall. Oh, I thought you were saying something. Yeah, I was going to ask you a yeah. question, Dele. NDLEA, you recall, was roundly lambasted for their role in another attempted extradition a few years ago. And people were saying that NDLEA was acting like the puppets of the American government trying to arrest a Nigerian citizen for extradition and it was ultra-virus. So damned if they do, damned if they don't. NDLA has tried to get involved with extraditions in the past. But are you suggesting then that this whole thing is, the entire thing is a pantomime? What about the other uh, um, officers who were arrested, publicly named and shamed? What about the issue of the drug couriers confessing that they have NDLA officials in the Akanu Ibiam International Airport in Enugu who have seen their pictures and what have you. So when they come in bearing narcotics, they're just waved through, which is just not, you know, restricted to Enugu Airport. I'm sure that happens in airports all over the country. What's your take on that and just how far the rot goes to start on the point that you originally made about this being bigger than one individual? Let, let me, first of all, let me be clear. I am not suggesting that this bust is about just covering up for Abba Kiari. It might very well be, but that is the exact problem that we have. We are living in an environment where you cannot take the word of government officials for, you can't take them at their word. You can't take the words as being truthful. You always have to look behind the meaning most of the time. Now, whether this be part of some pantomime or not, the reality is that the issue is out in the open. What is, in, what is not in dispute is that the Akanoibiam airport is a transit point for, drug, for a drug cartel. It is also not in doubt that there are officers of the NDLEA who are involved with this cartel. It is also not in doubt that Abba Kiari is involved so whether it was a, is a pantomime or not, they've opened the door. The question that we should be asking is who else are the parties involved in this? Now, if anybody was trying to play some pantomime, obviously this game is already out of their hand. But now let's deal with the specific issue of the laws as it relates to our extradi to extradition. If you follow the rules, and you do what the law says, all of the time, there will be minimal accusations or conspiracy theories being bandied around. You have a situation here where the NDLEA is not acting, in this case, based on a request by the Americans. They are carrying out an independent investigation and they have arrested a man for a crime. Now, whether the court likes it or not, 
regardless of any extradition uh, treaties we might have with America, and let me be clear, our laws are supreme to any extradition treaty, as far as I can tell. I might be wrong, go. I'm not a judge, and as I've always maintained, I'm a retired lawyer. But what Section 3 sub 3 says is clear. If this man is charged with this case, this NDLEA charge, which is independent of the Osh Poppy charge, nobody can take him out of Nigeria. Because it would, it would be an infraction of Section 3, subsection 3, generally. So as far as that one is concerned, people can turn around and say that, ah, maybe it was an attempt to help him, but it doesn't matter. The fact will be that a crime has been committed. The important thing is who are the other parties connected to that crime. Now, given a choice between an American prison and a Nigerian prison, I bet you Abba Kiari would rather be in a Nigerian prison. So, <clears throat> that he will fight to be kept here. Expect that. Now that the fact that he does not expunge the case against him in America, I understand that. But the question is, is how old is Abba Kiari? If Abba Kiari is given a 25-year term in Nigeria, I don't know the upper end of his, of his liabilities on that charge but if he gets that what is left anyway. this man must be close to 50 or there about now so in my own view if i were back area i would prefer to be here in nigeria so